Hey everybody, tonight we're debating whether or not climate change is humanity's greatest threat and we are starting right now. With Stardust opening statement, thanks so much for being with us. Stardust, the floor is all yours. Hi, I'm Stardust. I stream on Twitch. I do politics and I do really silly conversations. And my opinion on this question, is climate change the greatest threat, is yes. No elaboration, just yes. So I'll throw it to CTV. You got it. Thank you very much. Want to let you know, folks, if it's your first time here, welcome to Modern Day Debate. We are a neutral platform hosting people from all walks of life, and we hope you feel welcome no matter what walk of life you are from. And our guests, both Stardust and CTV, are linked in the description. Highly encourage you, folks. If you haven't already, you can check out their links right now, and that includes at the Modern Day Debate podcast, where we put our guest links in the description as well. So with that, thanks so much. CTV, the floor is all yours. Well, good evening, everybody. I am a critically thinking veteran. I served nine years on Ohio class submarines as a machinist made auxiliaryman. That's to say that I worked on diesel engines, hydraulics, pneumatics, refrigeration, basically anything mechanical that didn't have to do with the reactor my division owned it to include all of the firefighting and flooding and pestilence equipment. That said, with the current question at hand, is climate change humanity's greatest threat? Well, the obvious and clear answer is no, right? Obvious. We will get into the nuance, right, of why I think that uh, whenever the open floor discussion gets here and start us, if you like, I don't mind taking the lead in that one. Uh, but sure. but uh, when we get into that, I think that the the philosophical standard is going to be raised here on modern day debates simply by having minds such as CTV and Stardust here to explore this brand new topic. You got it. Well, thank you very much. And folks, want to let you know, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We have many more juicy debates coming up. For example, this Friday, another new topic, as tonight's topic is new and also this Friday's topic is new, whether or not space is a NASA hoax. We'll get to the bottom of that one, but we will also jump into open conversation. So with that, thanks so much, Stardust and CTV. The floor is all yours for that open dialogue. All right, well, Stardust... Obviously, humanity's greatest threat is humanity. Oh, that's a really good answer. Why do you say that? <laughs> well, I say that simply because humanity itself is what allows for the creation of civilization. It also allows for the destruction of ecosystems that, frankly, affect more of what humanity uh, has a need of to survive on this world than, they, than uh, uh, most of humanity actually realizes, right? And because of that, it leads to other things, um, such as, you know, creating internal combustion engines to put more CO2 into the atmosphere, which is not something that um, has had some of the greatest effects when it comes to uh, the overall, say, amount of CO2 that's actually in the atmosphere. Some of the things that have affected it more than most people would think is say like the reduction in whale population that has happened, right? Whales serve a very purpose, a very uh, important purpose in the oceans, especially with regard to their size and the way that their behavior is structured to where they dive down deep and then they come up and they swim to the surface and they essentially mix the deeper waters in with the more shallow waters, which leads to more creation of plankton and, and things that smaller animals as well as the whales eat. Um, just as an example, right? So like climate change in and of itself with well, the climate's always changing and it's been changing for a while uh you can look at average temperatures back during the 1300s to see that the world was cooler back then which is where they even get the temperature change that they're measuring now right but the logical short-sighted argument of industrialization leading to the climate change is very short-sighted in the way that it doesn't account for any of the other things um, that have happened as a result of civilization coming to fruition so what are the other things that that you talk about that are I guess uh this you're saying this climate change is um it's a short sighted view of these other things that it, it's it's um that industrialization has contributed. So I would ask what are what are those other things then? Other things such as I mean 
what are the arguments that you would have besides, say, like industrialization, right, and the burning of fossil fuels or, or uh, you know, cows farting in a field, right, creating methane gases, uh, which is, you know, cows farting in the field is, is a drop in the bucket next to the amount of methane is actually trapped in, in permafrost uh, up in, like, you know, the, the northern parts of the world, like, say, up in Alaska and stuff. Uh, um, well, I would say that there is scientific consensus. It's something like 97% of uh, scientists agree that humans are causing global warming and climate change, which kind of goes into your answer, actually, when you said humanity is humanity's greatest threat. Um, and maybe you're right about that. Maybe it's humanity's contributions that are uh, are 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 basically creating this, right? I mean, it is. Um, but I do think that it's one of those detriments that is the most harmful to humanity. So. Do you think that what's the most? One more time. The, I'm sorry. I was, my chat was telling me that there was a problem with my mic. Uh, chat, let me know if my mic problem is fixed, but can you repeat that? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what I said is, uh, your point about humans or humanity itself being humanity's greatest threat. Uh, really spoke to me because it is humanity that that has kind of accelerated this climate change. And nearly all scientists agree on climate change. There, you know, obviously there is some wiggle room, but it, it basically we, we see it that uh, global warming, um, uh, our models, at least for that, have um, consistently underestimated how rapidly it would accelerate. Well, the reason why you, you would even see any type of, say, increase would have to simply to do with the population of the planet, right? So, like, and that's assuming then that human beings are the greatest, um, say, player in the game when it comes to climate change, when in fact, the planet itself is has been regulating itself for way longer than human beings have been here. You know, there's a point like what's, can you answer me this? What's the default state of the planet? The default state of the planet uh, without us contributing to it. Well, what's, I mean, without, let's just, I mean, yeah, without Hard human beings, <laughs> it actually isn't. I mean, if you think yeah. about it, the, the default state of the planet is, is an ice cube. Right, because space is cold, right? You need something to create heat. So assume that the core stops, you know, rotating and creating the electromagnetic field that it does or having the heat in it that it does or that it stops being able to hold in the sun's energy rays from the ozone, right? The default state of the planet is cold, right? Um, I feel like the sun still has an effect despite <laughs> despite uh, like humans not being around, right? Um, feel like you know the environment still has an effect. Um, uh, maybe it's not as warm. Well, I mean that that right, right there. The, the reason why that you would argue CO two is because it's putting a blanket of you know gases around the planet that is helping keep in keep the sun's rays and the energy that the sun produces inside of the ozone, right? So the ozone is essentially a blanket around the planet that holds the heat in, right? Yeah. So like the mm -hmm. thicker the blanket, the more heat it holds in. Well, mm -hmm. assuming that there's nothing, none of that there, the default state of the planet would in fact be cold because there's nothing there to produce the heat or nothing to um, hold in the heat rather. Uh, I don't know. I think um, we we would probably still have a, a layer, just wouldn't be as as thick, right? So, um, I mean, yeah, we we probably do need something to hold in some heat, but um, but it, it's it's kind of overdoing that right now, right? I mean, it, it is like scientific consensus that ninety seven percent of scientists agree that humans are are causing global warming and climate change and causing the acceleration of it. So, I mean.
Well, there's that. Look, I'm looking here, and I'll send you the link mm-hmm. in DM. Okay. Because I, I just looked up uh, something quick to kind of give us a, a baseline to work from. Okay. So here's the DM. It's from solarsystem.nasa.gov, right? Mm-hmm. So what you can see here is the average temperatures of the, sun, the, the planets right, in our solar system. And you can see, obviously, that the closer that they are to the sun, that the hotter that they are, right? But the further sorry, they get... Um, I'm sorry, where, where did you put this? In the in the Skype chat or in... in uh... Discord DM. Oh, Discord DM, okay. All right. Yeah, sorry. That's my, my default's always that. <laughs> no, that's cool. All right, I'm opening it. Would you be able to throw that into the uh, Zoom chat? As well, that way I can pull it up on screen if other if the audience wants to see what you guys are talking about. Okay, are you looking at the uh, the scale, yeah. Stardust? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I you am. see, you see, you know, Venus is up there around um, eight hundred and seventy two degrees Fahrenheit. Mercury's at about eight oh eight oh three. Right, Earth is sitting there at about a temperate, what, 60 degrees, right? Mars mm-hmm. is now getting below zero, right, for the average temperature, and then Jupiter. And so, like, the sun definitely does play its part, right? Yeah. The point, the point here is, though, is that, like, the average temperature, if it's 60 degrees, right, that means that what I'm saying as far as the default state being cold is more true than the planet continuing to heat up past the point of no return. Because there will be a point where the planet itself does start to cool itself down, right? Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. have you ever seen that movie, The Day After Tomorrow? I did not see that movie, no. It's a really, really good movie. And while it's a movie, right, and there's definitely, you know, it's a movie, take it with a grain of salt, right? There is a lot of truth to what was being said with regard to uh, the North Atlantic currents and other currents around the world, how they carry heat from the equator to the northern hemisphere, and that's what allows for more of the temperate climates we experience, right? So, so like, like another example would be like, what is the biggest filter of CO2 here on Earth? Um, isn't it just like the, the plants and well, the you, trees? That's what most people think is it's the plants yeah. and the trees, right? But in reality, it's actually the ocean. Oh, hmm. okay. The plankton. All of these processes that happen, they process the CO2 and then uh, takes it out of the atmosphere. So like, mm-hmm. so like when it comes to discussing the idea as a whole, it's really hard to put it all on humanity when humanity is only able to take advantage of the resources that we have, right? The very limited resources that we have at that. And that's Mm -hmm. where like humanity being humanity's greatest enemy in this regard is always going to ring true because it's not just the population. It's also like a lot of the media that people intake and a lot of the fear that gets put into people and scares them into doing things, right? So mm-hmm. it's, there's, there's a lot of ways in which humanity is its, is its own greatest enemy versus the, the climate and it changing, which is a natural process. Um, it, it certainly seems to be more of a fear mongering technique than it actually is something that, um, say, is the greatest concern for humanity. Well, I think we can acknowledge that the climate naturally changes while still acknowledging that humans are playing a very large part in accelerating that, uh, like faster than it it would be on its own, right? Faster than it would be like if it were healthy, right? Like we, we should probably work on, on, I guess, like reducing that, slowing it down. Where did all of the fossil fuels come from that we're burning today? Burning today, um, I don't, um, I don't know. I didn't look at the news today. No, no, no. I'm just saying fossil fuels in general, right? 
Like, where are they coming from? Where are we collecting this resource in order to be able to use it to create energy? Or to create Um, electricity? I mean, take, you know, use the energy that's, that's in the fossil fuel to be able to create electricity. Well, we're getting it from, um, from like the ground, right? Like, pretty much, right? Like the, um, like fossil fuels, like the, the oil or whatever that we have in the ground. So. Right. And, yeah. and all the, all the oil and all the coal and stuff, you know, the, specifically like a lot of the, we'll just use the blanket term fossil fuels. How did they get into the ground? Well, isn't it from like, um, like things dying and stuff, right? Well, it, specifically an older earth had a lot more vegetation, right? Especially yeah. when, when trees were first starting to, to get um, ligament, I think is is the uh, the change in the plants that allowed for the, the growing of the trees. I think it's called ligament. Anyway, when that process started happening, what you ended up having, as far as the forests are concerned, is that the forest grew wildly out of control because ligma, maybe, uh, but the forest started growing out of control. Right. And they just, you know, as the the trees would die, they just fall over. Right. So then over, you know, tens of thousands of years. Right. These things cross and pile on each other and then more weight gets distributed over them. And then like rains come and put dirt over them. And then like they they get further pressed and compressed down into the ground. Right. And still the point where like the ground, which continues to say like. It's almost like a recycling process that the ground has, right? Something falls down on it eventually over, you know, many, many years, right? It will push itself back down into the ground. And then that's how you end up with the fossil fuels that we can find later, right? Mm -hmm. So all this carbon material was already created through natural processes and gets put into the ground to where we can then find it and, and collect it up and use it later. So all of the material... Right. Unless you believe that Einstein was wrong and matter can can neither be created nor destroyed. Right. So then all of this material that was here before when the plants were created uh, that got put into the ground allowed for bigger animals such as the dinosaurs. Right. To be able to come to fruition because of the higher oxygen uh, content in the atmosphere at that time. Are you aware that like during the time the dinosaurs that that uh, the typical 21% oxygen that we enjoy today was not typical then. It was actually 35% oxygen. That's what allowed for the dinosaurs to have, to get to the size that they were because there was a higher oxygen content in the air. Okay. Uh, Well, I'm not really sure how that has to do with like why we should, why we shouldn't be like being, why we shouldn't be taking proactive measures, right? Because it, even if the if you say that this is like uh, climate change is natural, and maybe to a certain extent, maybe to a certain extent it is, but um, humanity is contributing to it. Uh, scientists do agree on this, and there are like real health effects on people for this, right? Um, like specifically, children have real health effects due to the climate change, due to the accelerated climate change. They're like cognitive effects and, and physical effects. So we should be doing something because okay. that seems pretty, you know, that seems pretty important. Well, how committed are you to this idea? Uh, which idea? Oh, and this idea that we need to do something, right? So how yeah. commit, are, are you committed to like, let's do whatever we have to do, no matter what, to fix this problem? Or are there measured steps that you think are more appropriate? I mean, I think that, uh, I think that obviously we have to focus on, on multiple things at the same time. We can't, n- nobody, no, we can't convince the entire world to like um, drop everything and focus on climate change. But I think it's it is worth um, focusing on from a public health perspective, right? Um, uh, the global disease burden of climate change, like it's like eighty eight percent falls on children under five years. I think that that's like pretty outstanding. Um, so I, I think that I think that we need to handle things from a from a a public health perspective, and I think that probably working to reduce emissions and working to get other countries on, on the same page as far as, as um, 
efforts to reduce this contributed um, pollution, I think that would be super important. Well, what makes it so outstanding? What do you mean outstanding? Well, you said that, you know, kids under five, 88% for global, what was the word you used, sir? Global, the global disease burden of climate change falls on children under five years. Right. Yeah, 88% of it, yeah. So, so why do you think that's outstanding? Well, I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, I think that 88% is a large number, right? Well, I think diseases- that... I mean, what diseases are we talking about, right? Because, like, I got a bunch of vaccines whenever I was growing up against diseases that aren't really an issue anymore because of vaccines, right? So then, like, a new human being coming into the world not inherently immune to things is obviously going to have a a higher risk because they haven't gotten any type of immunity from that. And as soon as they do, then it stops becoming an issue, right? So, like, the first thing that I would be curious about as far as the statistic is concerned is like, what are the diseases that they are ranking is among like what's supposed to to make this 88% something that is definitely yeah. related to climate change versus it just being a human being being born. Right. So, so um, vector born diseases. Um, uh, so like things that are ca- carried by insects, uh, by ticks, by mosquitoes um, respond quickly to changes in Um, temperature and moisture, which um, increases their growth and duration. And so, um, so children are more likely to be exposed to these illnesses because they are outside more and they're around each other more and they are, so they're going to be at elevated risk of developing Lyme disease, um, uh, hantavirus, dengue fever. I had dengue fever once that was horrible. Um, uh, Zika virus, these are all things that are affected by climate change. Okay. That sounds more of a result of population density more than anything else, which is one of the things that actually started the, a lot of the diseases uh, with regard to human beings was their close proximity to animals, especially when farming got started, you know, whenever they started uh, the agrarian agrarian shift from hunter gatherer to being farmers right and they started having pigs and and other uh, uh, other game around them is, is ultimately what kind of created more diseases for human beings that said though <clears throat> it doesn't seem to me that i heard the justification needed to to warrant the what billions, trillions of tax dollars that are going to be created or collected here. And I still haven't even heard like a a way forward. So like, let me propose an idea. If we're so worried about these CO2 emissions, right. Then one of the first things that we would want to do is to get away from say burning so many fossil fuels. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We want to get away from that. Right. New, Clear power is a good way to do that. Geothermal. I wouldn't recommend uh, solar panels uh, on large scale. I love scale. nuclear power. I yeah, love yeah. nuclear power. Yeah. yeah. So then, like, the other question then becomes is, like, how committed are you to the idea of nuclear power, right? Because what could happen, uh, and this would all have to include a bunch of governmental agencies getting together and pulling their heads out of their ass, which, you know, is kind of like, is that really going to happen? I doubt it. But we get to the point where, like, the, the Sahara Desert used to be a very lush rainforest, right? 20,000 years ago, it was a rainforest. So then, like, would you be of a mind to, say, put nuclear reactors on the African continent that would both produce electricity and then bring in uh, water from the from the ocean or from the Mediterranean Sea, distill it, and then pump millions of gallons of fresh water into that desert and actually turn it back into a rainforest? And you quickly oh. see like how big of a project that would become over an entire like continent, right? Yeah. yeah. The thing about nuclear power is that yeah, it takes a long time, right, for it to be, uh, well, to really even like put it together, I guess. So, but well, it takes um, a few years. It takes a few years to build yeah. a reactor, to be sure. But yeah. once it's on station, because uh, essentially what a nuclear reactor is, is just a big steam engine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, 
Um, I'm all for alternative energy. I've always been like super pro nuclear power. Uh, if you look at any um, chart of how, uh, like how all these different um, uh, types of energy uh, affect human health, nuclear power actually by far has the least effect on human health. Um, it has the least amount of, of um, I mean, when it, there is a mistake, obviously it's bad, but um, but it has the least amount of mistakes that have been uh, w- like, if you look at the chart and everything. So it's, it's obviously like one of the best, um, solutions. So what's uh, the, the what's the biggest argument that you have for the collection of tax dollars and forcing the United States, which frankly, in, on the world scale, since we can both kind of agree that population has a lot to do with the amount of energy use, right. And China has one point. 6 billion people and India has 1.8 billion people, I believe is the the last numbers that I've seen. So like roughly we'll say, you know, three, three and a half billion people over there just on that side of the world versus the 300 million that we have here in the United States. So like we could do everything in our power to to help this problem along and collect tax dollars and do all of these things. But at the end of the day, in other countries that are just kind of initially going through their industrial revolution, if you will, uh, and are going to continue building such as they have been, it's going to be really hard to get them to, to, to pump the brakes a little bit and get them to slow down, considering the number of people that they're trying to provide some type of infrastructure for. Mm, yeah. I mean, I think it, it will, we'll have to, um, try to incentivize these other countries, right? I mean, they're going, it, when, when climate change accelerates, they are going to be the ones who suffer the most, especially, um, uh, countries in the South, right? So there should, I mean, the, it should matter to them just based on that. Well, what makes you think that they will actually be suffering the most considering they would have the newest built infrastructure? Well, I mean, if if uh, the global temperature goes up and uh, the rate of disease spreading goes up, because you, yes, we can say that there's a greater population, but warmer climates allow for the spread of diseases much more efficiently. Um, so just based on that, there are going to be a lot of people suffering. And uh, since this, these Southern um, countries tend to be warmer, they are going to have even more accelerated rates of uh, disease spread. So I don't know if that makes sense. No, I did. I mean, you're, you're right. right. Viruses yeah. and, and disease that you can, <clears throat> can spread much faster. Well, they are not as easily killed. It's the best way to say it. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, in warmer mm-hmm. temperatures as they are in colder temperatures. Mm-hmm. <sighs> And, and he, even heat waves, right, uh, disproportionately affect children and older people. So um, I, I think it's it would affect people in those countries the most, given, you know, they continue to boom in population. So it sounds, to, it's, yeah. it's, but at the end of all of it, though, right, humanity will survive. It's not like it's going to kill off all the human beings. There will be a certain population that do survive, and it will be the... It's like it, it to me. It almost seems like one of those. I mean, it would still well, affect people in the West too, right? It, there are people in the southern states who probably will be affected by this because we um uh there is some that uh, the rate of West Nile has gone up in the U.S. West Nile virus. Um, let me see if I can pull it up. Uh. See here, and even um, ticks, right? The amount of ticks that ha- carry Lyme disease have gone up in the U.S. because the temperature has gone up. So as the temperature goes up, um, you find ticks are more widespread, and it, um, you know more. There's more likelihood of contracting Lyme disease. It's funny you bring up Lyme disease. Do you know how we got that? How? I mean, do you know or? No, I don't. I honestly wasn't aware of it uh, in its entirety myself, but I started doing some research into it, and it seems like it actually came from an island 
there in New York. I'm trying to remember, I'm trying to remember the name of that. I know there's somebody in my chat that knows the name of this specifically, if she's listening. Um, Plum Island. That's right. Mm-hmm. Plum Island is where the Lyme disease came from. And if I'm not mistaken, as I was doing my research along that, it was actually human beings that had a part to play in that. Yeah. You're, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So then, like, again, we're back to humanity being humanity's greatest threat. I don't think I disagree with you on that, but it, because humanity does contribute to the rise in temperature. Uh, so, I mean, I agree with you on that one, but I, I, I do think that um, I think of the different things that humanity contributes to that is going to affect us in the future. The, the greatest, it, it's going to be climate change be, just because of the health effects alone you can look at. Right. Mm, I, I think that humanity's interactions with the planets are in and of themselves, what they are doing, right? And they do have a nominal effect on their environment. But I think that with all the arguments that get made for climate change, including the ones that we've had here tonight, um, they end up being a fraction of just the natural cycle of the planet doing what the planet is going to do while we're here. Because, I mean, just like... Like we're we're actually in in an ice age right now. Okay. Right. So since we're in an ice age right now, and we're coming out of the ice age, right? That means that at some point there's like a a non ice age, right? And then it's like an even deeper ice age. So if we understand that there are these cycles in the planet, it's like I don't know. Perhaps maybe it's a. Uh, it's very arrogant of human beings to actually think that they're having the effect that they are. But, but it's, it's quite literally consensus though. Right. It's quite literally like scientific consensus that it is humanity contributing to climate change and making it the way it is. Unless you disagree with that. All right, one more time. It, it is quite literally scientific consensus that um, <laughs> that humans are causing global warming and climate change. But the evidence for this being used to say that is simply just the burning of fossil fuels, right? But we've already went over how, like, all of this matter was already here. It's just changed its form from being a solid in the ground or a liquid in the ground to now being a gas in the air, right? I mean, even if with, with that argument, right, oh, it was always here and we're just changing it, it's the change that we're doing that is making climate change, is contributing to climate change. So you don't think that given enough time that that, that, that matter would have been able to work its way, say, way down into the mantle of the earth and then be kicked back up through, like, say, volcanoes? Uh, possibly, but it would have been much more gradual, right? And then probably, um, I, I don't know, if we if we were working on this like a while ago, we probably would have been able to combat it better. What makes you think this needs to be a war? Well, not so much a war, but just like a joint effort to reduce this just based on, I mean, I, what I care about is, is human health. Um, I don't look at I, like what I look at is is human health and and viral diseases spreading, um, and so I think I mean I don't like the idea of all these vulnerable people who are going to be uh, victims of of heat strokes of um, viruses more easily spreading of of different um, insect carried diseases spreading and us not um, doing anything about it, especially since again, 88% of that is going to be affecting people under five. Right. Um, I, I just don't, I don't like this idea that, uh, well, it was going to happen and 
because just because we're contributing to it doesn't mean we really have to like combat it that hard. And um, I don't know. It just it doesn't it doesn't seem right to me. So so like, what do you think the best way to be able to help the situation would be? Um. Well, I, I mean, there are a couple of things, right? Um, there are policies we can do um, uh, in the U.S. Um, we could... But well, we already discussed how that's going to be a fraction of what needs to be done on a global scale, right? Right. So. We can, we should, we should, I mean, it needs to be a global effort. You're right about that. I'm, I'm not, I'm not disputing that. It needs to be a global effort. And I think when you advocate on uh, on a health basis, right? On a public health basis, and you can and other countries can acknowledge that they are going to be the the primary victims of this. That their most vulnerable populations are going to be primary victims of this. Then they should have an incentive to reduce um, the amount that they are contributing. However, um, uh, you know, it, it does need to start somewhere. Right. And it needs to and we have to acknowledge it as something that's important. We have to acknowledge that these vulnerable populations are, are, you know, not of their own fault going to suffer. You know what? My chat gave me a challenge tonight. They asked if I could tie this back to the war on drugs. And you know what? I think we can do that. I think we can do that. <laughs> I, things, I, I was looking at that too. I was looking at that too. I mean, one of the things that uh, has been missing for a while has been, say, like uh, stable stable homes for children to be able to grow up in, so that they can, you know, receive a quality education, right? And then we've had governments get involved in education to the point to where, like, this whole Common Core curriculum is only like made robots. Right. They, you know, people are not leaving high school, being able to think on their own. Right. They, 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 un, they only understand what it is that the governments tell them is good or bad. And they don't bother thinking for themselves as to whether or not something is good or bad. Right. <clears throat> so then, like, because of that, the thing that would help the most would be people understanding more of the planet around them, how gases and liquids and solids you know, how they change states, why they change state, how they change state, uh, the different ways that you can produce energy, right, and have it be, you know, more eco-friendly, uh, how you can be less wasteful. But in reality, a lot of the waste that gets produced is the result of the consumerism, especially here in the United States, and I would argue now China and any other developing nation or developed nation, right, like whenever you go buy, I don't know anything, right? Be it a toothbrush or, or uh, I mean, any other product, right? There's always a lot of plastics associated. There's always a lot of, you know, waste that ends up filling up your trash bin. And then you, you know, you go and throw it out, and it ends up in the landfill. Well, that trash doesn't actually go away, right? Think about every time that you've ever thrown something into the trash can and then took it out to the curb for it to be hauled off. All of that trash still exists. Now, think about all the trash that you've produced over the course of your life, right? And that's just one human being, right? That's got to be at least a bag a week, right? So, like, you think about all that trash, all that material still there, and we're still sitting here producing, 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 right? And people still need products, right? So, like, in reality... What could happen would be education, perhaps maybe more recycling, uh, more uh, ways to figure out how we can best turn these discarded materials into more useful materials. I mean, that's essentially what led to the creation of, say, like the electric arc furnace, which allowed for uh, better production of steel, right? So they could, you know, recycle more materials and return that back into steel. So... Overall, uh, the, the government collecting taxes and then trying to redistribute funds in order to, to create something in the infrastructure that's hopefully going to have, you know, a meaningful impact, you know, 
such as like these these windmills that they keep putting all over the West, right? That has disrupted the migratory patterns of birds and killed, you know, fucking lots of the birds, right? But like, are we supposed to not give a fuck about the birds? Uh, with the whole reason for putting up the windmills was so that we produce electricity in a more cleaner way, but now we're killing the fucking birds, right? So it's like, you, 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 you know, you're cutting your nose off to spite your face. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, um, that you can tr- tie the drug war directly to climate change. Um, there are tons of articles on it. Uh, the U.S. war on drugs. Um, I basically, I, I believe um, here it is. They um, cocaine traffickers um, uh, often will hide in rainforests, and they will launder their drug money by posing as loggers and ranchers and they will illegally cut down rainforest. So, I mean, like, you know, if you wanted to tie it to that, um, I mean, yeah, the, the drug war does have an effect on it. Wait, did you Uh, just, did you just make the argument that drug runners cutting down trees to LARP as logmen? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) They have to hide. Right. So, Cocaine traffickers have to hide and they, I guess they choose, um, you know, posing as a logger is, is one of those things that they do. I mean, um, there's, uh, let's see here. There's, there's a ton of articles on, on tying the drug, the war on drugs on, uh, to, um, climate change. So. Well, I, I can't look. Yeah. I think that with regard to the war on drugs, about the only thing that you could definitely say is education, right? Mm-hmm. Be- beyond that, I can't see any feasible argument that the war on drugs would have contributed to climate change. Uh, I mean, there are tons of articles that cite this, that that cocaine traffickers pose as loggers. Yeah, but the there's, there's, there's lots of articles out there that say that Bigfoot exists, too. Right. Yeah, I mean that's true. That's true. You know, so like I always take that stuff with a grain of salt. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, but like, I'm still I'm not convinced that beyond what is scientific consensus, right? Is and it is that the the climate changes, right? The consensus is not, however, at least from mm-hmm. anything that I have seen that the consensus is that human beings are the main contributor to that, right? So, so it is, it is actually. Um, so, uh, it is, um, 90% of, of climate scientists, not 97% agree that humans are causing global warming and climate change. And I can give you, um, the sources on this. Um, let me see if I can pull those up right now. I'll link them to you. Um, should I put them in the chat here? You could also, oh, if you want to show the audience, you could always use screen share, which is the uh, the green box in the middle bottom part of the Zoom window. People usually get a kick out of seeing the sources. Okay. Um, let me see if I can pull that up here. I mean, uh, NASA even has a thing on it. Are you putting it in the Zoom chat? Yeah, I'm going to put it in the Zoom chat, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's that. Um, and, um, oh, here it is. And uh, for a statement on climate change from 18 scientific or, uh, associations... Uh, observations throughout the world make it clear that climate change is occurring and rigorous scientific research demonstrates that the greenhouse gases emitted by human activities are the primary driver. And I can share that. Let me, how do I share? Just a window. I'm clicking the link. Yeah, so it's 18 scientific associations that all agree. Um, American Medical Association, 
Um, it's among those. And it has the list of all the different statements that uh, different gover- um, intergovernmental bodies and government agencies have made as well. Um, scientists have known, the U.S. National Acad- Academy of Sciences says scientists have known for some time from multiple lines of evidence that humans are changing Earth's climate primarily through greenhouse gas emissions. Um, yeah, U.S. Global Change Research Program, Earth's climate is now changing faster than at any point in the history of modern civilization, primarily as a result of human activities. This has everything on it. Um, AMA. So then let me ask or, you this. Let me ask you this yeah. very, like, this very simple question. Right, which is like, I'm sure you're probably aware that not too long ago, Texas was hit with a freeze, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How do you explain that? The freeze? Um, uh, I think um, that is supported by climate change, is it not? Well, that, I, don't I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the specifics behind the freeze in Texas. I would have to look into it more, to be honest with you. Okay, well, I mean, like, for me, that would be an example of, say, like the planet attempting to cool itself, kind of like how, uh, especially being down here in Florida, right? Like, it's obvious if you study, you know, like the history and pattern of hurricanes, right, that they seem to be having some type of, say, increase in like their uh formation and their their power level right so like the planet itself is is doing things to cool itself so like you would argue that well if the human beings would just slow down their electrical production by burning fossil fuels then we could slow down the storms right would that be the argument um i think it would have to be a little bit uh, i mean we could slow down but i think what you were talking about um uh finding alternative and and building those alternative methods for energy would be good um it would have to be multiple things though i, I don't think there's just one solution to this yeah and it's kind of like when i go back and mentioning the whales earlier right they do a lot to to help uh you know mix the the oceans of the world right and that ultimately leads to better co2 uh re- What's the right word there? Do you you think that, um, I feel like Texas is just one Mm -hmm. example though, right? Texas is just one example. There's a lot of examples of where the planet has been, you know, getting cooler as a result of some of these things, right? So then like, it seems to me that the, the more that ends up happening as far as humans continuing to produce electricity, that the planet itself is is self-regulating around us, whether we like it or not. And if that's the case, then we are all sitting here. Even if you were going to assert that the planet was self-regulating, I don't know that that's a good thing because that's extremes in weather, which again affects human populations and affects human um <laughs> affects human health. You know, it affects um, uh, young and vulnerable people. Yeah, but then wouldn't that just go back to what I said earlier about the arrogance of human beings? The, the planet what? was, I, I mean, the planet, the planet wasn't having a problem self-regulating itself long before humanity was here, right? So I think that the relationship dynamic needs to change between human beings and the planet as a whole to be sure, right? And there needs to be much more appreciation from people and people understanding that the planet was here before them and that the planet will be here after we're gone. So there's best practices through education that can be taught. But beyond that, the planet is going to regulate itself, right? I guess I don't understand how, how the planet, maybe you can explain it more to me. How does the planet um, regulate itself? Like beyond just like this freeze in in Texas. Well, it has a lot to do with the, well, let's go back to the water currents, right, with the oceans. So, like, because of the the currents of the oceans, it allows for heat 
from the equator to be brought into the northern hip, the northern hemisphere, right? In the past, there were thicker sheets of ice that were at the North Pole, right, and and went even further down into Canada and North North America, and we even have mountains carved out as a result of glaciers, right? So, like, the planet was cooler at one time than what it is now, and the planet was hotter at one time than what it is now. That, to me, speaks of self-regulation of the planet on its own, and it doesn't actually need human beings to be able to do that. Now, human beings may be having a a contribution as far as increasing the rate in which the planet moves, but to think that there's some way that beyond, say, Thanosing half the population that we're going to have the type of change needed in order to affect what it is that you're wanting to affect because the population only continues to get bigger, right? So it seems like that everything that you've pointed out so far that you're you're not wanting to have happen is going to be the eventuality period given enough time and population increase. I don't know that you can point to the increase in West Nile virus, the increase in the presence of ticks all, you know, not just in one part of the U S but like all over, um, the increase in Lyme disease to a growth in human population that is, has been tied to climate change. And I don't know that just because, just because the, well, I can, I can actually do that easily. Okay. Increased human population is going to lead to more trash, which is going to lead to more discarded food, which is going to lead to more rats, right? More mice to to feed on the leftovers, right? And not just rats or mice, right? But any other creatures, pigeons, etc., that end up feeding on the leftovers of human beings, right? So as a result of all that, you're going to see an increase in other animal populations that would be carriers of ticks, right? And then the more that those ticks are able to get around, which they do. Yeah. then you're going to be, you know, you're going to see an increase then too of Lyme disease because then more carriers of the disease by way of the rat or the pigeon or whatever the case is, uh, they continue to spread and they do so around population densities where there's more food available, which is why you typically see a certain kinds of animals around human, you know, densely populated human areas versus not so densely populated areas, right? But this is, this is, I, I don't know. I feel like this would need to be like, supported by it because there are organizations that have said that um, climate change is directly affecting the spread of these vector borne diseases. Um, it says uh, CDC uh, climate is one of the factors that influence the distribution of diseases borne by vectors, such as fleas, ticks, mosquitoes, which spread pathogens that cause illness. Um, I mean, I, I would need to see more, than just this um, speculation that, well, we make more trash and therefore we have, you know, more rats and, and all of that. Well, I would call it something more than just simply speculation. I would call it a logical reasoning of events without being directly involved, right? Which is not speculation at all, right? That's more of like, yeah, I can see how there's more trash and more food for these things to feed off of. And I can see how that's going to lead to an increase. And it's very logical, right? The thing that's not making much sense is like with your statistic, you keep coming back to it, right? But it's not ringing home for me. So maybe you can do that. Which one? Which statistic? The, the one where you keep referencing vector-borne diseases and Lyme disease and, and these these yeah. things. So like, so like uh, bring it home for me because I feel like there's something missing. Yeah. Um, let's see if I can pull this up here. Um, so let's see here. Uh, I had um, a thing, but I have so many tabs open on the increase in um, West Nile virus. And it's supported by the EPA, the CDC, and um, there is this NIH article. Let's see here. Um, (laughs) 
This may be a time for me to remind you folks that our guests are linked in the description. Both Stardust as well as Critically Thinking Veteran are linked in the description both here on YouTube and in the podcast. So we highly encourage you. What are you waiting for? Click on their links. You can hear plenty more from what you've heard tonight. And we'll give Stardust a chance to find that. But I do also want to mention that in just a few minutes, we'll be going to the Q&A. And so Stardust, I'll kick it back to you. Yeah. Um, so climate change impacts West Nile virus transmission. Um, and I will link that for you. Um, one of the other things that hasn't been mentioned, right, is it's mm -hmm. like the increased rat population. The other thing that ends up happening around more densely populated human areas is the reduction in predators, right? Like, uh, possums, foxes, coyotes, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know hawks you know like these types of predators that would normally feed on the, i mean hell like where i was up in tallahassee i used to have a damn squirrel that would drive my dogs absolutely nuts it would just run right out there in the yard and you know hop up on a on a fucking old stump mm -hmm. sitting there eating a nut just driving the dogs crazy right and the dogs obviously wanted to go chase the squirrel so i you know let them out and let them go chase the squirrel of course the squirrel gets up the tree and gets away every single time because it's a fucking squirrel right but <laughs> But the reality is, is they're pretty fucking brazen because they don't have any natural predators to get them, right? So, mm -hmm. like, that's how ticks get around, right? They get around because they, they, they'll they jump on a on a squirrel, right? It's, it's running through the woods or, or a, a, a rat or whatever the case is. That's how these things end up moving around. And these things will move to wherever there's obviously greater sources of food. And there's no greater source of food. Uh, than more densely populated human areas. So then that's how you're going to see an increase in, in disease and stuff is because those diseases are being brought closer to human beings because of the food source. And then that's how you're going to end up with, you know, the transmission to human beings. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, there, that probably is a factor. I'm not denying that that, you know, makes sense that more human beings, more, more food, products are going to attract these things but there is also a wealth of like a scientific sources again that are saying that uh the change in climate is increasing the rate of um west nile transmission and of lyme disease transmission um i can i i linked one of those in in the chat there um, and I can link it here as well. Uh, another one. Uh, oh, is, no, that's the same one. Sorry. Um, uh, there is a, there's a, like a market increase over the past 20 years in West Nile transmission. And I think the most recent one I just posted. Yeah. So like, shows that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm still sitting at, if you really want to have, like this ultimate change in the climate. One, you're going to have to control population somehow. The more human beings that are created, the more power that is going to be needed to generate electricity for the things that make life a little bit easier on all of us, right? Like having AC electricity to be able to put your food in a refrigerator, for example, right? That makes life mm -hmm. so much easier because now you can actually keep food fresher longer so that you're not sitting there worried every single day, where's your next meal going to come from? You're like, oh, I got something in the freezer. I don't have to worry about that right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Pretty fucking convenient, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and yeah. there's a lot of things that through the production of electricity that allows for human beings to not have to worry about the more basic hunter-gatherer instincts. I mean, that's kind of the idea of how human beings became agrarians to begin with and then actually discovered beer, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is, I think, one of the greatest inventions in the – or the greatest discoveries of mankind was beer, frankly, right? But that's just me. But beyond I mean, that, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I want to grab me a beer. <laughs> okay. Um, I think I I I get what you're saying about um there's going to have to be a lot done to reduce the acceleration, rapid acceleration of, of climate change. There's going to be um a lot of inconveniences, but I think think that just on a global scale, making that our focus would be really good because um, 
if you are a country or if you're in a country in uh, in like a southern hemisphere country, it is going to directly affect you the most. Um, there are going to be a lot of people who who get and die because of this. You think it's only going to affect the southern hemisphere? No, it'll have it will it will affect the 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 um, north as well. Um, but if you were looking for a way to incentivize it for all the other countries, then yeah. where do the where does the majority of the population on Earth live? Majority of the population, uh, northern or China. southern hemisphere. Well, I guess I guess China is is like not really southern, but it's pretty north of the equator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean. India and all these other like countries are still pretty south. So, I mean, if you're looking for a way to, to influence them and even the fact that it's going to, um, yeah, but, to we, affect- but since we understand that the majority of the population yeah. lives in the Northern hemisphere, then it's not necessarily the, the appeal to save the Southern hemisphere, considering there's a far less, uh, density of population in the Southern hemisphere, which leads me to believe that they would probably be, be better off with regard to say disease because they're not as densely populated, right? They'd be better off with regard to like the amount of electricity that their cities well, just are because just because there's more people in the north doesn't mean that people are not densely populated in the south. That that doesn't really follow. Mm, right? It, people it, it are follows, densely populated everywhere. It it follows it depends for, where they are. It, it follows pretty well when, like, if I'm not mistaken, like on the African continent, there's like 1.2 billion people, right, on the entire continent. And we talked earlier about India having a population of 1.8 billion, right, and China having 1.6 billion, right? So, like, both those two countries on their own have more population than the entire continent of Africa, right? Mm-hmm. And... If I'm not mistaken, the majority of that population is below the Sahara Desert, which is where the majority of it would be in the Southern Hemisphere, because north of the equator, right, or let me look at a map right quick, because I'm pretty sure that the equator runs either a little bit to the south of the center of the Sahara I just want to look this up real quick to be sure. I'm just bring up a Google map right quick to look. That's all. Yeah, let's see. Why doesn't that already have the equator on there as default? What? I type in equator and it takes me to equator trading company. What the hell? Google, you're so silly. All right. So, yes. Okay. Now that I'm looking at it. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't, it does. My main point is not really surrounding like a South and North. I only brought that up because you'd, you'd brought it up earlier. But if you're looking to incentivize these other countries that are also contributing to climate change, I think it's, it's a pretty clear argument that it, the increase in viruses, the increase in health risk, um, even like with air quality, um, uh, there is a, an inc- increase in respiratory infections, right? It's, it's pretty easy for me to see why we should be incentivized to, to be combating this. Well, I mean, then, then, like again, I'm back to how committed are you to this? Because the if the two most densely populated areas are India and China, and they are more than likely going to be the biggest contributors, contributors, right, based off population to this problem, then how do we go about changing the policies in other lands that are not a part of the United States? I'll give you a chance to respond, uh, Stardust, but. This is the last question we can have before we go into the Q&A. We've got plenty of questions from the audience, but Stardust will give you a chance to respond. Okay. Um, I think it is, okay, You're yeah, China's the number one contributor is what it looks like. Number two contributor is United States. Number three contributor is, is uh, India as far as COT, 
uh, CO2, sorry, uh, emissions go. Um, I think it would be pretty easy to incentivize, again, these countries to um, partake in it. They Because these are countries with populations and a lot of young people in those populations that are going to be affected by this. If you bring public health into it, I think it, it should matter. Though sometimes I think when I look at like what happened with COVID, maybe it doesn't matter to people. But um yeah, I mean, I, I, it has to be a, a joint effort. There has to be some um, talks, I guess, internationally. We should be involved in trying to combat this because it's going to be people suffering no matter where they are. So We will jump into the q and I want to say thanks so much, folks, for your questions. And we're going to jump into them right now. So thanks very much. Barry Barry says, take a shot every time James says juicy and you better. Also, you better click a, check out and click on our guest links. We do appreciate them. They're linked in the description as well as at the podcast. So, NOXD, thanks for your question, says the biggest contributor to climate change is CTV's vape. By the way, your dog's a cutie. <laughs> thanks, Joe. Next one, Code5601 says, question for both. What do we deal with or how do we deal with countries that will – unquestionable only unquestionably only benefit from climate change and have negligible negatives like russia i don't know that there i don't know that there's any country that's just only going to have benefits from climate change the spread of diseases is going to affect everybody you got it in james montalbano says if china makes most of the products used by americans shouldn't americans reduce their consumption thus reducing the pollution created in china i think that might be for um, you, CTV. well if china doesn't produce the the stuff that's needed somebody's going to produce it because it's still needed right that would kind of go back to the uh, the drug war, right? It's like, oh, but if you just stop producing the thing, people won't get it. Well, bullshit. Somebody's going to make what it is people are looking for, and they're still going to get it. So you didn't actually solve the problem. You just moved the problem, right? You got it. And then, thanks, I appreciate your question. Forward Tribe says, global warming that turns places colder, parentheses, hence the new name, has been around since the 70s. Since then, we've always been 10 years away from world destruction. Comments, please, from both. I don't think that we were 10. <laughs> I don't remember that being said, um, uh, I, that we're 10 years away from destruction. I do know that um, scientists were saying we need to act now or it's going to accelerate really fast. And we are seeing that happening. And it's been accelerating much faster than any of the models that scientists put forward. So, no, oh, and I remember when I was growing up, right? Like that was definitely what was being said. There's been a lot of fear mongering with regard to climate change that has led to millions of dollars collected in taxes in order to fight this this problem. And we're nowhere closer to finding a solution than we were 50 years ago in the 70s, whenever we were trying to start combating this problem. So. I don't know. It sounds like a problem for man bear pig. You got it in. This question from Sahi Luke says, question for both, considering how the Taliban following the teachings of Muhammad took over a whole country in about and and about is about to take that civilization back to the seventh century, is Islam more dangerous than climate change? I would make an argument that Sharia law is definitely more dangerous, especially considering their oppression of women and free thought. Uh, their entire ideology is based around bringing peoples back to the Stone Age instead of allowing, you know, human beings to be treated as equals as they should be. Right. So that would definitely I, uh, be one of those humanity gives humanity. Yes. Yeah, so I agree that there is something um, very wrong with the Taliban. And I think that any theocracy is bad for women. Most religions this is going to be a hot take, but most religions put women in a secondary status. And um, and if you're already in a secondary status in a society and you just achieved rights and you've got a group that is taking those rights away. Um, it, yeah, they're very easily taken away. And I do think that it poses a very real threat. I don't know what the solution is to that, 
but I do think that the uh, effects of climate change are going to affect everybody. And that includes people in those areas. So, um, yeah. <laughs> you got it. And this one coming in from Forward Tribe says, so what do you think of Al Gore's $8.9 million Ocean View Villa? And many of the climate people, climate change people, advocates, mansions by the sea. What do I think about it? I mean, I hope they're being, you know, um, I hope they're, they're like, you, you can make money, I guess, but I hope you're being, you're practicing what you're preaching. So it sounds to me like they're taking advantage of a government insurance program. And that uh, whenever storms come through, they're able to collect much more money through insurance by owning that residence than they would have otherwise. And then because of the protections that have been put in place, they're able to to rebuild and then uh, at a cheaper rate and then still be able to collect even more insurance when the next storm comes around. It's like a continuing cycle and it's all guaranteed by the government. So. You know. Oh, so climate change is helping them make money by actually like um, coming through and making their insurance claims like uh, yeah, it's it's, so def- much it's wow. definitely so able- yeah yeah it's definitely able to pour more tax dollars out of the poorest Americans and give it back to the rich. You're right. Hmm. We'll jump into this next one from Forward Tribe says so. Ninety seven percent of scientists agree that quote humans are the cancer of the earth unquote. Here is another statistic: one hundred percent of experts who don't agree are excommunicated from the scientific community. Comments from both, please. Uh, 100% of those who don't agree are excommunicated. I guess I would need to see a source on it. Um, And if that's the case, if that's the case, I mean, I, for one, am glad that when there is somebody in medicine who is um, spouting something that has been the consensus for decades... I would I, I would be happy if like those people were probably excommunicated from the medical community. So All right, one more time with the question. You bet. It was they said <laughs> 90 or they said so 97 percent of scientists agree that, quote, humans are the cancer of the earth, unquote. Here is another stat. 100 percent of experts who don't agree are excommunicated from the scientific community. Sounds like gatekeeping. That is actually it for our questions, folks. We do want to say we appreciate our guests. As always, we want to encourage you to attack the arguments, not the person. And also want to remind you that our guests are linked in the description. We have many more juicy debates coming up, my dear friends. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for many more juicy ones in the future, including this Friday and Saturday. I'm excited I'll be back. And with that, we will... I should say, I'll let our guests go, and then I will be back in a moment to let you know about upcoming debates. But one last thank you, Stardust and CTV. It has been a true pleasure to have you on. Thank appreciate you, you having me. Yeah, appreciate you having us. 100%. Thank you, guys. And I'll be back in just a moment, folks, so stick around.
amazing. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. It's always fun to see you there. I want to say hello to you in the old chat. It's always fun to just get to say hello and hang out with you guys. I've got a ton of work as I'm doing a lot of class prep. I'm teaching a new class this fall, which is exciting. But whenever I teach a new class, uh, and this is only my second class, so don't let me fool you. It's not like I've taught a bunch of classes. But I, but nonetheless, uh, I used to teach general psychology over and over. And so I had the materials prepped and ready. But now I have the challenge of teaching a new class, and it is involved putting everything together to get that class going. So I, I have to go in a bit, but I do want to say hello and, so, and also say thank you for your, your support, folks. And my dear friends, in case you have not known, we are excited that we do have a Discord. It's linked in the description. If you have not already checked out our Discord, highly encourage you. It's also a good, you could say, training grounds if you want to get experienced in debate. We do usually ask that people, if they happen to come on to Modern Day Debate, we're usually looking for people with some sort of past experience of some type. And so that's one way you might be able to get that experience. And other stuff, though, let me first say, Hannah Anderson, good to see you. Marv the Martian, thanks for coming by. The Science Ultimatum with Jason Torn, thanks for dropping in. CD and Nice Girl, thanks for being here, as well as Woody and Joseph Turcott. Nikki, good to see you. And Pseudonym, thanks for dropping in. Mr. Anderson, good to see you. Nice Girl, glad you're here. Chef Hallen, Manic Pandas, and... Well, let's see. I'm catching up here in chat. Oh, that's right. And... To those of you in the old Twitch chat, thanks so much for being here as well. Let me say, before I keep going with the YouTube chat, I want to say, in Twitch, good to see you, Pothold, as well as to Potzel and Surgeon General 777, and Brooks Barrow, good to see you. Thanks for coming by. And then said, would you like his mod sword if you could, please? Ah, how do I do that again? Someone told me about... I can, how do I give someone, it's like give them a sword in Twitch? Is that what it is? I'm so sorry, you guys. Forgive me for not knowing how to do this because I feel like I used to know how and now I'm like embarrassed that I am trying to remember. Does that mean I, I'm making them a moderator? Let me know if that's what adding a sword means. Is it a sword in here in Twitch? Oh, it is. Yeah, they said mod sword. Okay, let me find you, Surgeon General. I'm tracking you down. I have found you and let's see. I am modding you up. And folks, if you didn't know, we are in on Twitch. So if you haven't already, you can check that out in case you happen to like Twitch more than YouTube. You have that option. And good to see you, though. Others in the old YouTube chat. Thanks for your super chat from Ferran Salas says, amazing. I couldn't agree more. It was amazing. We do appreciate our guests. And as always, I want to encourage you to attack the arguments instead of the person. We do appreciate our guests, and it was a fun time tonight. Brand new topic, and we've got not only a brand new topic tonight, but this Friday, we have another brand new topic. You guys, we are finally going to get to the bottom of this. It is going to be juicy. It is going to be fun. It is going to be pretty out there. T-Jump debates his father, Flat Earth Aussie, on whether or not space exists. So, dear gosh, <laughs> so, we will see what uh, what explanation Flat Earth Aussie has for why there wouldn't really be space? I, I don't know what this is. I've never heard it, so we'll see. But Stripper Looker, good to see you, as well as Sideshow Nav, thanks for being here, and Red Knight 821, thanks for being here as well. Wilmar, good to see you, says, amazing. I couldn't agree more, Wilmar. And let's see here. Joseph Turcott. Pumped, you are here, as well as Perpetually Annoyed. Thanks for dropping in. Let's see. Oh, gosh, Sam, you're right. I am so sorry. I seriously, what I think happened, this is like 100% my fault. I'm so sorry, Sam. I missed your question. I think I accidentally, so the standard questions, I put them in this post-it note on my laptop, my, like, uh, what's the word called? My desktop of the computer. And... I'm so sorry. I think I accidentally copied over yours. I'm so, like, I, I did not mean to miss your question. So please forgive me for that. I, uh, it wasn't too crazy. I honestly would have been happy to, to answer it. And Supernova, or not answer it, ask it. Supernova, good to see you. Thanks for dropping in. As well as Shay Annalyn, thanks for coming by. We're glad you were here. And Chris Gammon, good to see you. Say, like, thanks for dropping in. Says, hey, oh, what's the new class it 
is organizational psychology. So things like motivating employees, preventing burnout, teams working together, leadership, you could say leadership styles. It is going to be a lot of fun. Organizational structure and change and development and like just it's a it's a big class. It's a cool class. I'm excited to teach it. And it's honestly kind of an honor. So I'm I'm happy to get to do that. It's going to be a lot of fun because it's, I think, a really interesting class. So I'm glad I'm getting to do this. And want to let you know about other things, you guys, in case this might be useful to you. If you did not know that Modern Day Debate has a podcast, my dear friends, I am excited. I'm loading it up right now. You might be wondering, James, I don't know, what does the podcast look like? You see on the very top row there, you see the Modern Day Debate logo, which, by the way, Tapazzo, thanks for our logo looking amazing. That black and blue logo. I seriously love that. So you can see right there, that's the Modern Day Debate podcast. All of our debates that we have here on YouTube and Twitch live, we put on the podcast within 24 hours. You would be crazy not to check this out because so many debates there. And we also every Thursday, because we only started the podcast a year ago. So that means we went for about a year and a half, maybe a little bit more. Let me think about that. We went for about two years, almost two years without a podcast at all. And then we were like, you know what? We should have a podcast. And we started it. And it was like, well, we're two years late. So we have a lot of content that we never have put on a podcast before. And we usually use that for our throwback Thursday podcast uploads. Because we can basically, so for example, I think it was like a week or two ago, we put, I think it was Vosh versus Pastor Vanderclay, Paul Vanderclay. That was a great debate. People loved it. And that, by the way, that podcast episode is been a huge, hugely popular downloaded uh, podcast. People really enjoyed that episode. And so that was from, I think it was probably from a year and a half ago. But like I said, since we started the podcast afterward, we were like, well, hey, we've got all these debates from the past. We could upload those. And so as mentioned, that's our throwback Thursday debate. We usually put up an older one. But, huh, Samuel Lillehome, good to see you as well as Karag Nightwolf, good to see you. Long time visitor here. And Perfect One, good to see you. And Hannah Anderson, thanks for dropping in, hanging out with us tonight. Thanks for modding. And Nikki, good to see you as well as Let's Farm says, join us at the Modern Day Debate Discord where the debates continue 24-7. Won't you? Believe me, friends, Larry Letts and, and others, to be fair, but especially Larry has taken the lead in terms of making the Discord fantastic. And I've linked it at the top of the live chat. What are you waiting for? You can click on it right now. So I know what's hip nowadays. I know that things like discord and saying the word based are cool things. That's why I've been constantly, I've just been obsessed with the word based. It was like a new toy for me when someone taught me that. So thankful. But believe me, folks, the Discord really is good. Seriously, I'm not joking around about that. It really is good. And so highly encourage you check that out. That's linked at the description or the top of the, uh, it's both in the description and at the top of the chat. And Joseph Turcott, good to see you. Danny3648, thanks for dropping by. Perpetually annoyed. Good to see you. And then, that's right, Chris Gammon says, James, I don't know. What does the podcast look like? And now you know for sure. Master Optics, good to see you. And John Howe, thanks for coming by. John Howe says he took an organizational psychology class. Good for you, John. That's cool. And Brooke Chavez, thanks for your kind words and thanks for moderating. Seriously, I appreciate the support. That means a lot. And my dear friends, we're excited about the future. We have many juicy debates coming up. We're finally, we're getting that reschedule for Nephilim Free versus Jim Majors on whether or not there were giants in the past. It's going to be amazing. That's this Saturday. You don't want to miss it. Believe me, it's going to be great. So we're excited about that. And we're excited about many more juicy debates to come. If you love political debates, if you're sick in the head like us, you like a little bit of controversy, I want to let you know we're going to have just that. We are going to have, we're currently, it's in the works. These aren't confirmed, but it was kind of like, you remember when I told you, it was like a couple weeks before we had RN back on. So RN Raw's debate, was that a week ago already? Fun time. 
And like maybe two weeks before that, I told you, I was like, hey, I was like, we've got a cool one. We're, it's in the works and we can't announce it yet because it's not confirmed. But I'll give you a hint that, you know, eh, we're, it's in the works. We've got some cool stuff coming up. We've got some other cool ones. For real. Believe me when I say that. I know that it seemed, maybe it seemed a little bit slow this summer. You guys have probably noticed that we've had maybe like two shows a week sometimes, which is pretty light compared to what we used to do. And so believe me, we've got some awesome stuff coming up and I've been kind of behind the scenes. So much of it is about the emails. I, I send out so many emails that like don't, don't actually get a response, but that's okay. And I also get a lot of emails that do get a response and that I'm like, oh, I want to tell people what this is that we're setting up. But I got to wait because the last thing I want is, you know, if I'm setting up a debate and then somebody's like, hey, James, you know, uh, I know that I said I'd come on to your show, but it looks like you're already like you, you already made an event for it. I haven't even promised yet. I was just considering it. That's not good. Or even if they say, you know, if people go back to them and they're like, oh, hey, I heard you go on that, you know, on the show. And they're like, I didn't say I was for sure going on there. And so I've got to be careful about what I can announce. But I can tell you in the next 30 days, we have two potentially monstrous political debates that seriously there. I can't guarantee them. One, I'm a little bit nervous about and like, will this person say yes? I don't know. But I, I think I can talk him into it. I'm going to try really hard. And then the other one, I'm like, the I've got. Uh, it'll be it'll be big it'll be cool trust me um so anyway my dear friends we're excited about the future and then chris gammon says base beta soy jabroni that's a perfect combination i love that base beta soy jabroni and so it's funny that if there's like people outside like sometimes like the people that are working around here will like take a seat and like they, i wonder if they hear me like yelling all this stuff Dan Zamet says, James, ever think about getting B-O-F, let's see, B-O-F on, and then says, Big Papa Fascist. Is it B-O-F? That's, it was the, was the O meant to be a P? I think you're referring to the same person. I'm open to it. We're pretty, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We're pretty open to, I mean, we've had people from all walks of life, and so I'm open to it. And like, uh, I don't, I'm, I'm still new, like learning about different debaters. Like sometimes there are people that people tell me about and they're like, yeah, you should have this person on. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm new to this. And I, I find them and I'm like, oh, wow. It's like, they have like, you know, they're like a really experienced debater and they've got tons of followers or something. And I'm like, I know far less than I think that I know in terms of uh, learning what's, you could say the landscape. And so, but yes, I am, I'm open to having him on if he'd like to come on. And Oliver Catwell, good to see you, says, Oliver Catwell, or says, I'm a beta. I fell asleep and just woke up. These debates make me, uh, for some very strange dreams when they are on in the background. That is so funny. Oh, man. I feel like I had a funny dream last night. I'm trying to remember what it was. I can't remember what it was. But so glad to see you, Oliver. And Oliver, thanks so much for all your support, as well as Sideshow Nav. I told you guys, like, was it two weeks ago, I had, like, a really hard day and a really hard week, and I did, and, I mean, I've had harder, you know, I can't, I don't want to be a beta complaining, <clears throat> my life's been good overall, I'm thankful for it, and, you know, like anybody, it, sometimes things go ways in which you didn't hope for, but I'm thankful, and I am optimistic, and I am thankful that Sideshow Nav and, uh, and Oliver and others have been so supportive in, in terms of listening to me during that hard time. And so that support means a lot. And believe me, I'm optimistic about the future. We are going to persevere. We have big plans here, folks, and we're going to carry them out as we strive to fulfill the vision of providing a neutral platform so everybody has their chance to make their case on a level playing field we're determined to make that vision a reality we're working on big new things and believe me someday we'll look back at modern day debate and we'll say wow you remember when we were kind of small and we had we only had about you know 51,000 subscribers i was like wow we were like that was when we were pretty little back then it's just going to keep growing believe me we are going to continue expanding we've got a lot of awesome stuff coming up and we want to say thank you guys for making it awesome, seriously. The fact that we have a true melting pot, different beliefs and ideas from all over the place, seriously, it's fantastic. I, and you guys, wanna give you guys credit. The ideas that you have for debates and the way that you've connected us with debaters, like sometimes, no joke, I mean, even hitting the like button. Hit that like button, folks. Believe me, you won't regret it. 
We are at 90 likes. We can totally get up to 100. We've got six dislikes from our six Australian viewers who hit like. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. And my dear friends, let me tell you. Oh, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> let me think about this. I was going to say... Agent Smith, 1470, good to see you in chat. Oh, that's right. I was telling you guys all the ways in which you help this channel. One, I'm not joking. Hitting the like button, hitting the subscribe button, things like that. That tells YouTube like, hey, people are engaging with this channel. Basically, YouTube knows like, hey, this is a channel that's not just going to sit and have like, you know, two subscribers forever. Like this is a channel that people are enjoying. And I'm super encouraged by that. So thanks so much for all your likes, hitting that subscribe button, all that stuff. But also, sometimes people will email me and they'll be like, hey, James, I already reached out to so-and-so and, -and -so and uh, they want to come on for a debate. And I'm like, that is fantastic. By the way, Oliver Catwell, I've got to get back to Kenny. I'm so sorry that I'm, I'm like, I'm so bad. And I am, I'm behind on that. But, well, thanks so much for whoever... To Potts will just let me know that we have been rated in the Twitch chat. And we want to say, hold on, I'm, I'm figuring this... We do want to say thank you so much for rating. Who was it that rated? I didn't see. Let's see here. Amazing. Want to say welcome in the Twitch chat. We are glad that you are with us. Thanks for coming by. We appreciate it. And Rage Pope, thanks for dropping in. We do appreciate that. Thanks for your raid. We do appreciate it. And thanks everybody who is watching at Rage Pope. We seriously hope that you are doing well. And we hope you feel welcome as we were just saying, folks, I was telling people, we appreciate that this channel really is a community in the sense that this has been phenomenal because of people like you. Seriously, whenever you hit like on a video, whenever you're just hanging out here and making it an eclectic bunch, a melting pot of people that are politically to the left, politically to the right, Christian, atheist, you name it. We're thankful for that. And it really does make this a vibrant and unique community. I'm very serious about that. And so thanks as well. This is something I was thinking about today because it's encouraging. Thank you so much to everybody who has supported our charity streams. So I'm excited that we had done last week the charity stream. Thanks to people like you folks. For real, it is you. We raised, it was, I think it was, if I remember right, $128 for that charity stream, which basically it was, it was going to survivors of domestic violence. And so that for me is like one of the most fulfilling things about modern day debate is when we get to do those charity streams. And so we want to say thanks so much for supporting that. And my dear friends want to let you know, if you are watching in the Twitch chat, maybe this is your first time here. You're like, what the, what is this? Amazing. We want to let you know, we hope you feel welcome. And I also want to let you know, we do have a YouTube channel. If you haven't seen it, I'm linking that in the old chat. Namely, our YouTube channel, I just put that in the Twitch chat. And so, thanks for coming by. As well as Small Cat 2 thanks for coming by. And TLSKB, thanks for dropping in. And thanks for also letting me know that it was Rage Pope who raided. Thanks for your support, Rage Pope. Seriously, it means a lot. And just another opinion said Rage Pope sent us. Thanks for letting me know that. I appreciate that. And we're glad you're here. Sir GRE, thanks for coming by. And let me know if I pronounce your name right. Folks, for real, I always want to try to do that. Thick boy. <laughs> I love that username. That is awesome. Thanks for dropping in. And Trev1, thanks for coming by. And Newt, thanks for dropping in as well as is it Sir Gre or Sir Gre or is it Sir Gre? Let me know. And then, but yes, <laughs> Rage Pope. I keep seeing the word middle guy. Is that something like, is that something that people use? I wasn't sure if I sat in Dylan Burns' chat. I stopped in Dylan Burns' chat today and I was just listening in. I, I was just skulking, uh, but I did say hello. And I, when I did say hello, people said middle guy, but I wasn't sure if that was like a meme that people say when I'm not around or if it's a meme about modern day debate. But Devin Alexander, we're glad you're here. And then, but yeah, thick boy, I can't, I can't stop saying that. Veggie bro, thanks for dropping in. We're glad you're here as well as, let me, let me make sure you, you let me know if I'm pronouncing this right. Is it be try? Betreichenbach? Let me know. We're glad you're here, Betreichenbach. 
Thanks for dropping in. And so we are excited about the future, though. And Rage Pope says it's a meme because you're the middle guy in all of this debates and don't say anything. Oh, that's funny. I get it now. <laughs> that's, oh, I'm flattered. That's encouraging. It's a, it's a good meme because that's something we've tried to do. And so thanks for that. And then uh, Nate Gino said, middle guy is a surname for you coming from Destiny's community. Oh, that's funny. I like that. That's really cool. So, but Nate Gino, good to see you. And then let's see here. Want to tell you, though, some upcoming debates. So, as mentioned, tomorrow, or not tomorrow, Friday, the great space hoax. It's going to be juicy whether or not NASA is, I don't know if it's some sort of alleged projection that NASA is tricking us into thinking that we're seeing space. I don't know. As well as whether or not ancient giants existed on Saturday. Saturday night, sometimes things get weird here. But also... We're excited that, as I mentioned, there are a couple of political debates that I, I can't say it for sure right now because I, I can't say it until a debater is confirmed and they're kind of like, oh, okay, like, yeah, I'm, I'm in. Uh, in which case, then I can say the names of the debaters and let you guys know what's up. I was so excited for this one, though, that I've already made the thumbnail for it. So if, if one of the debaters won't do it, I'd be bummed, to be honest. I'd be sad because I, I was so excited. I was like, this is going to be an awesome debate. And I made the thumbnail, and if, if it doesn't happen, I, mean, I don't know. I'm going to have to, like, Photoshop somebody's head into the thumbnail. I don't know. But, but for real, I think the, the hope is we're hoping to have this juicy, epic debate on the 30th. So stick around, folks. Keep an eye, because if this epic debate, the first one, because there are two I mentioned, this one, they're both political debates. This one would be on whether or not systemic racism exists among the police or, or the U.S. more broadly. And it will be featuring two like top tier debaters. You could say online debaters that will be clashing. That's the hope. It's like it's still in the works where one person is kind of like, ah, let me mull it over. And so believe me, we're excited about that. The other one is a politician, like a genuine politician, not like the level of Biden, I admit. But so maybe not the president of the United States, but a legitimate politician that I think a lot of people would recognize. Because when somebody was like, hey, I, I think I might be able to, you know, I, I have a contact with so-and-so. Uh, would you like to host them? And I was like, we'd love to host them. Like, that would be amazing. We're waiting for co that confirmation. Uh, but basically, it would be a politician who is politically conservative. And like I said, well known. Like, I, I'm not... I'm not like a, a political expert, but I, I still knew this name, and it's a name that, it's not like Greg Abbott, but in a way, it's close. I, I, I'll only say that. So I am excited, though, that it's going to be it's gonna be a lot of fun. And so, my dear friends, uh, they would be debating another, like, big-time Twitch debater. So that's kind of like what we're looking for there. And then, Nate Gino, oh, okay, got it. Thanks for... And then Nate Gino says, where do you guys get those loonies? It's true. We have a lot of people with different sorts of <laughs> views. Uh, a lot of it, we, we just started at the very start with, you could say, kind of some of these out there views. And then it really, I, I would get more emails where people would say, hey, I, I got this view that's kind of like that. And I want to, can I come on? And, and that's the thing, too. I want to mention that. I always forget this, folks. We are wanting to open it up more. Such that if you want to debate, if you're like, man, I would love to come on a debate. I've got some ideas that I would love to debate. Please email me at moderndaydebate at gmail.com. We're excited. Want to encourage you. We are looking for new faces. We're looking for new topics. And so now is a good time where it's like, hey, if you do want to come on, if you email me, and I'll throw that in, into both the YouTube chat and the Twitch chat. And so... I'm putting that in modern day debate at gmail.com. And you can, we do usually like, like we prefer if people have, we usually do prefer if people have debate experience, that's for sure. So we do have the discord where you can get debate experience. So that is really cool. And we also usually ask that people use their camera. There are a couple of people we kind of let it slide. One of them is Nephilim Free. He's never used his camera, but we kind of grandfathered him in. We don't 
like really push too hard on him using his camera because he used to come on the show when we had like 200 subscribers and we were still growing and we are we're still growing now but but especially back then nephilim free was always willing to come on on the drop of a dime so he really did got to give I know that not everybody here is a fan of Neff, but I, you got to give, in your mind, you might say your guys' perspective, the devil is due. But I, I got to tell you, too, uh, Neff, okay, once in a while, Neff and I had a little bit of friction where Neff would, uh, you know, get mad. But to be honest, you know, I'm not perfect. And so I've never held any sort of grudges against Neff. Like, those are small things to me. But Zach Frederick says, if you're going to have people debate giants on this show, then how about the Mandela effect? Come on, James, do it. I'm open to it for real. I, I've had that requested. People have said like, hey, would somebody debate me? And I'm like, on the Mandela effect. And I was like, I, I don't know who to even ask. Like, it's so new to me. I'm like, I'm totally new to it. But let me know. I'm open to it. And DiscipleDave.com, thanks for dropping in. I see you there in the old chat, as well as yo. Thanks for dropping in. We're glad to see you. I see you there in the old chat. And then, that's right. Neff is no Darth. That's true. And Prez, thanks for coming by, says, who are the debaters that brought the biggest audience to your channel? Well, Destiny, I would say for sure, has probably brought maybe the most. I would say Kent Hovind has brought a lot. They even had a debate together. That was like one of our first big debates. That one, people really enjoyed that, which it was really fun. It was a great debate. Matt Dillahunty, for sure. Aaron has helped a good amount. I, I would say Matt Dillahunty's probably brought the most new people to the channel by coming on the show. And then I would say Destiny is high up there. Vosh is high up there. And I would say that Destiny, the funny thing is in the creator studio, I can see what other channels are. What's the word I'm looking for? I can see on our creator studio on YouTube what other channels are most popular among modern day debate subscribers and destinies is always the most popular so uh, they, i think it's like a section where it says channels that you know modern day debate viewers also watch and destinies is always ranked number one and then i think it's like number two i think vosh is in that list usually and then i think um oh atheist experience is definitely in the line i mean that's a debate show for sure and then the Line, that's another one, Jimmy Snow's show. And I would say, I'm trying to think of any others, but I would say those are the biggest ones. But Nate Gino said, the NASA stuff. That's right. NASA, I don't know if, if Ozzy would say that this is a NASA cover-up. I am not sure. But first time chat from viewer, one Damien five. One Damien five, we are glad you were here. Thanks for dropping in. And... <laughs> Nate Gino says, glorious indeed. Tapazzo says, the glorious internet. It's true. I got to be honest. I'm a little bit, I mean, call me what you will. I'm a little bit sick. I love the kind of out there debates. So for example, like I enjoy the Bigfoot debates and you know, it's kind of like, have you guys ever heard of the Drudge Report? So the Drudge Report used to be a really popular news source, usually for people politically on the right, maybe some moderates, maybe some people on the left. I don't know. I always felt like Drudge Report was kind of like it had kind of a right-leaning bias. Uh, back then it did. But back when I would say the last two years or three years, it got I think it got bought. And now it, I think it maybe has more of a little bit of a left-leaning bias. But I would say the, the Drudge Report was always putting up political articles. So they would pin up political articles and they became famous back like all the way back when like Bill Clinton was in office. So it had been around for a while. And what happened was the Drudge Report, in addition to putting up these, what's the word I'm looking for? Political stories. And then, eh, you know, they put in like other news stuff, like, you know, scientific breakthroughs and things like that, or whatever it was that happened. And they would always put, they would always put though, these fun, like kind of cryptic things like demonic possession outbreak in New York City and they can't stop it. And I'm serious. Like, so that would be like a real article that they would link and it was a really successful, like, Drudge Report was gigantic. And so my only point in saying that is just that we, in a way, like, have a similar style in the sense that we do love political debates. We do love science debates, like Flat Earth. We like uh, whether or not there was the flood of Noah. We do love 
philosophy slash religion debates like does God exist? That's fun. No doubt about it. But it's our guilty pleasure. We really do enjoy having these debates where what's the word I'm looking for? Cryptic. Bigfoot. We have not had one on the Chupacabra. I'm open to it. If somebody is a, the, the trick is I want genuine believers. So I don't want someone that would come on the show and be like, yeah, I believe it. And they don't really mean it. We, we've always wanted, and don't get me wrong. I know other shows sometimes do devil's advocate debates. It's just not what we're looking for. We hope it goes well for them. We've got no, like we would never say it's like a bad idea or like something, you know, it's, it's a good idea if it works for them. For us, though, we always ask, we want debaters who actually want, you could say, to debate the beliefs that they truly hold dear. And so that might be Bigfoot. It might be, who knows, you know, you name it. But let's see, Tapasso says lots of old debates and on podcasts. That's right. I am excited, though, that it is encouraging that the podcast has like I said, that debate with Vosh that we put out last Thursday is one of our most downloaded podcast episodes ever. I'm dead serious. So like that was, I think, Vosh. Uh, I'm trying to remember the topic. It was The topic was Jordan Peterson. So Paul Vanderclay and Vosh talked about whether or not Jordan Peterson had done more good than bad. Let me see if I've got it here. I don't think I can see downloads from inside of the modern day debate, but doesn't this look, thanks to Tapazzle for the logo editing. I'm sorry, I'm, I just can't help, but part of enjoying something is expressing it. You know, like you're expressing your joy or your pleasure in it. And so I, I'm going to show you this. Doesn't the app look amazing? You guys, seriously, it just looks so beautiful. That's the modern day debate podcast app. And I, seriously, I just love that Topazzle and the other person that made the, the logo in the first place. We bought, we bought, we bought like a handful on Fiverr, and but uh, Topazzle made it look tremendous. He he souped it up. Rage Pope says the skunk ape is real. Oh, I've heard of this. Hold on, the skunk ape. I think is this like a version of Bigfoot? says, the skunk ape, also known as a swamp ape in Florida Bigfoot in American folklore, is an ape-like creature that is purported to inhabit the forests and swamps of some southeastern United States, most notably in Florida. That is super interesting. I am intrigued. So the first picture I see, it looks shorter than Bigfoot, but the other pictures I'm looking at, the alleged skunk ape looks very, it looks just like Bigfoot. So it says, planet of the skunk apes. Let's see. I'm intrigued. Like, seriously, that is just so, it's super interesting. So, I am like, oh, gosh. If anybody believes in the skunk ape, let me know. We, we are open to having you on. Because I just get it, I got to be honest, I get a kick out of that stuff. And so, it's super interesting, I have to admit. And I'm looking at some pictures online, and I'm like, I just, it's such a juicy topic. It really is. So, yeah, my dear friends, we're excited about that. Uh, maybe a new topic. You never know. We'll see. Maybe we'll see it in the future. And but Chupacabra. I mean, Loch Ness monster. I'm open to it. Uh, but the thing is, we want real cases, like where people are trying to make a real case for it. That's where we, you know, we really enjoy it. Like we we don't want it to be like a joke. We want it to be like, all right, bring your best evidence forward, and let us see what you have. And I love it when people will bring like videos or photos. Like that makes it even more fun. Kind of that stuff's fun. So let's see. Rage Pope says you should be able to find a lot of people for that one. I agree. That would actually seriously be awesome. And Brooks Burrow says, I agree. There's a lot of people who would love to debate that. So folks, for real, if you email me at moderndaydebate at gmail.com, we are wanting to have new faces on Modern Day Debate. And so whether it be on Skunk Ape or if it's maybe something political, that's something too that we're like, hey, we want to try out new topics tonight. We have never, isn't it amazing? We have never before done climate change until tonight. Isn't that crazy? I'm like, wow, how have we not done it yet? So really excited about that. And so thanks again to Stardust as well as Critical Thinking Veteran. We do appreciate them both. And then Dan Zamet says, conspiracy debate. This is in the YouTube chat. It says, conspiracy debate with Alex Jones. He'd wipe the floor with his opponent. Juicy. 
strong words from a strong man. You guys know what movie that's from? If you do, you'll have my respect. And let's see here. <laughs> Mr. Anderson says, quote, then the sun has to be less than 200 miles away, direct quote. No one would say that, dot, 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 until now. The internet has become, I sincerely believe this, and I thought of this independently. So I've seen like other people who have talked about this, and it, it's like it's not actually that like brilliant of an insight. Um, it's, it's not brilliant at all. Um, I'm, I'm not saying that any of my ideas are brilliant, but I will say that I thought of it and then I was like, you know what? It seems true. And then I started hearing other people say it. The internet I think has, and the funny thing is if people were like, we're going to have the internet and we're going to have so many enlightened people and all of the, like the false beliefs of the world will just fall away as people become more educated and they'll have more knowledge at their fingertips and therefore, conspiracy theories will die away and other sorts of like silly beliefs or whatever. And what happened? The internet has basically made it more crazy. So if you think about it, for example, like flat earth has exploded, maybe thanks to the internet, probably, I mean, think about it this way. If you believed in flat earth or if you believed in, and there are a lot of beliefs that you normally wouldn't have brought up before the internet, you would not have brought them up to people in your everyday life, like your neighbor, right? Because you'd feel like, uh, or here's the thing, here's another thing that blew up, like bronies, guys who would be like really, the guys in their 20s that were like really into My Little Pony, or uh, let's see, another one would be uh, furries. All of these kind of, you could say sub-communities, like these groups, had grown significantly. And it's like, well, yeah, like the internet gave people a way in which it's almost like Tinder where you can like anonymously express your interest in something, see if someone else takes interest in it, broadly speaking. Like on Tinder, you can swipe right. You're expressing, you're anonymously expressing your interest such that the only, the only way that anybody would find out is if they swipe right on you as well, in which case, hey, you you meet and, you know, maybe maybe sparks fly, you know? However, it's just like that in, let's say, anonymous chat rooms where you're like, yeah, you know, you know, you're like, yeah, I know you guys are open, open to new ideas. I got to tell you something like, you know, I'm really into this or I'm really into that belief or idea. And people are like, and then, you know, let's say only two out of the 10 people in the chat room are like, me too. They find each other more easily. There's no real risk in sharing your beliefs that normally you would have never said that you had in person because, you know, you would have been afraid. You would have been thinking, like, if I say that in person, I know that people are going to think I'm weird. And, you know, and so people were afraid. And so think about it. The Internet has, if anything, it's made it get more weird. And so Brooks Sparrow in the Twitch chat says, folks call it a skook hum chuck near where I live because of the Skook um, River. That is super interesting. Huh. I didn't know that. I, I'm intrigued. And it's kind of like the grass man of Ohio. So like there's like the grass man of Ohio, which looks a lot like Bigfoot. And it's like their version of Bigfoot. And then you have like the, I think it's the Yeti or the abominable snowman is like the, the white version, like the white fur version. So, <laughs> but the white fur version usually living in like cold climates. So yeah, super interesting. And also first time chat from viewer 555 crown says, I just bought some money sign rage. We're going to the moon. We're glad you were here, friend. Thanks for dropping in with us. And we hope you enjoy that, that rage that you recently purchased. We're excited though. I got to tell you, I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of the other versions. There's like a swamp monster in Ohio as well. That's kind of like Bigfoot. Let me find this list of Bigfoot-like creatures. Because you guys don't even believe me. You're maybe like, what? Are you like, are there that many? List of cryptids. Thankful for Wikipedia. So it says animals, aquatic or semi-aquatic, as well as terrestrial and winged. Bigfoot, Sasquatch, as well as... Oh, British big cats. Have you ever heard of that? Oh, this is interesting. In British folklore, British big cats, also referred to as ABCs, phantom cats, and mystery cats, feature in reported sightings of large cats in British countryside. These creatures have been described as panthers, pumas, or black cats. Do they have any, like, 
actual pumas like because it really wouldn't be it's not it's not that cryptid if it's like they had that i don't know i don't know if they do though but chupacabra is on the list of course the dover demon i don't know if i've heard of that from dover massachusetts i think i've maybe heard of that if it's the winged one on the i think it's the discovery channel i've watched some of these shows where you know they go over all the different types of monsters the flatwoods monster this is from Entity reported to have been sighted in the town of Flatwoods in Braxton County, West Virginia. Very juicy. Honey Island Swamp Monster. Now, that's pretty interesting. And this is, oh, okay, so it's the Cajun Sasquatch. So if you're down in, like, the southeast, maybe Louisiana more specifically, you might run into that. The Mongol Mongolin monster, also known as the Arizona Bigfoot. Wow. It's funny that, yeah, like the Mongolin. So it's almost like every state, not every state, but a lot of different states have their own like names. And then let's see here. Alleged behavior by Bigfoots. Have you guys ever seen the movie Missing 411? Um, I think it's like hunting the hunted. It is so interesting. It is. I'm serious. You guys, I'm not afraid to like just tell you that I like a lot of weird stuff. I'll be honest. Uh, Bigfoot, I'm kind of like I'm on the I'm on the fence about. I I doubt that the Loch Ness monster exists. Although if you think about it, it's not that crazy. I mean, sharks are a species that have been around for like a billion well not a billion years but millions of years. I think the sharks go back to the either the Jurassic or the Cretaceous. So a long time. So, I mean, uh, the Loch Ness Monster looks a lot like a plesiosaur, right? And so maybe one or two survived and, you know, but I don't know. I'm pretty doubtful about that one. But Bigfoot, I'm actually kind of like, eh, I'd give it like a 50-50. Maybe there's something like a Bigfoot. Maybe. I don't know. And that's the thing, too, is, you know, you have like smart people who have made cases like, Dr. Jeffrey Meldrum, who we've hosted, it's been a huge honor to host him. That was a, one of my favorite couple of debates. Um, oh, okay, Oliver Catwell says ABC, Anglo Big Cat. Oh, no, that's interesting. I see what you mean there. And then Veg, Veggie says, Dylan said that you drink black coffee. Tell us that is a lie. I do drink black coffee. I don't want the extra calories. I usually, oftentimes I drink coffee because I'm doing my intermittent fasting and it helps me feel full. And so uh, since I'm fasting, though, you know, I just have to have the black coffee. I can't have anything else. And then Mark Adam Crow, good to see you, says I would do the debate myself, but I'm perhaps not very well prepared. My mind is a bit tangential. Hey, you and me both, bud. I am usually just so scatterbrained that as a lot of people who have hung around this channel for a while know, sometimes it's like, oh, gosh, like I remember one time someone called me. I think this is like, yeah, this is when I lived in Windsor, Colorado. Uh, Singleton, Jonathan Singleton. Were any of you guys around back when Jonathan was still here? Um, he called me and he's like, hey, you have a show that's supposed to start right now. People are on the watch page waiting. And I was like, what? Really? And I completely forgot. It was just one that I left up on accident. But Fitness Life, thanks for dropping I see, I drop in and I see you there in the old chat. And then let's see here. Brooke Chavez says, Swamp Ape is the name I think you were thinking of. Oh, okay. I think you're right. The, that I was thinking about that. And then Marv the Martian says, no evidence for any Bigfoot. Juicy. Well, what I get a kick out of is like, like I like the cases where people are kind of making the case of like, hey, I think this is the real thing. And so, for example, for example, Dr. Jeffrey Meldrum says we think this is he thinks and the others maybe, you know, the people who uh, adhere to his view, you could say think that it's maybe like Gigantopithecus has somehow survived or something like that. So interesting stuff. It's like that, that you just get a kick out of hearing those. So those are actually some of my favorite debates, no joke. But I want to let you know, folks, I got to go. I, it's a little bit later than I planned on. Whew, I've got a ton of work this week. We're going to make it. But I have, I have to got to, I've got to prep for this class that starts on Mo Tuesday. I, I start, the first lecture is Tuesday. I've got to prep the lessons that's going to be involved. I'm excited about it, though. I like the challenge. It's good. I'm an optimist. It's going to help me grow. It's going to stretch me. And being outside of my comfort zone is a good thing because that's where the growth is. Believe me. The other thing is I'm also excited that 
working on getting a paper submitted. I just have to do a couple last, eh, maybe three or four last, well, maybe more than that. <laughs> I've got to do like 10 analyses and then I'm, I'm planning on sending it out pretty quick after that. So really excited stuff though. <sighs> Brooke Sparrow says there was a group of hillbillies hunting for cryptids. It was a poorly scripted and acted show. Hey, sign me up. I like, like what I'm hearing. And uh, what I was saying, though, is it's going to be a busy week, but I am excited, folks, and I'm also excited. I think around September, we'll kind of get the modern day debate wheels cranking at full speed again. It's been a little bit behind as this summer has actually been a little bit more busy with like, research stuff than I expected. And Mark Adam Crow says, I live just the way from Windsor. I didn't know that. That's funny. Small, small world. Let me know if you ever want to get coffee. For real, I'm serious. I'd be willing to meet. As I, I always like getting to meet people. That's why I started Modern Day Debate. It's really fun. It's seriously, it's a blast. But yes, basically, once I once I get a little bit more caught up, I think Modern Day Debate will be going kind of going at full speed again, where we'll have like maybe like regularly four, maybe even five debates a night, or not a night, a week. I think we'll get back to that maybe in September where it'll be more commonly like four debates a week. Cause I usually, I like it like that more. And lately we've only been doing about two. And so believe me, I'm excited. So whew, juicy stuff though. So thanks everybody. Seriously. We love you guys. Thanks for all of your support. Let me know for real modern day debate at gmail.com. If you ever have a hard day, you need somebody to talk to. I'm serious. I've been thankful to be able to talk to people when I've had really hard days. I had a nasty breakup not too long ago. And I'm just thankful that I had some friends who were willing to listen. And so for real, reach out. I, I do want to be there for people. And so if you ever have a, as I put in the description, like you want somebody to, to just listen or, you know, you want somebody to, to pray for you. Like I do want to try to be like supportive of other people. And seriously, I, I just appreciate you guys hanging out. It really has been like a family. I remember back in, I think it was in December, a woman had shared she just lost, uh, she had tragically just lost her father to COVID. And I was like, man, that is so, I was like so sad for her. My heart, it was like my heart was broken for her when I heard, when she, she had mentioned that in the chat. And I was so glad that she felt like Modern Day Debate was like a community where she could share that. I was just so encouraged that she felt safe here and like, you know, kind of like just accepted and she could share something that heavy or deep and that she could and not worry about like people being mean or being trolls or something about something like that. And so anyway, I just appreciate you guys. It's a, it's a community. So thanks for your kind words. Thanks for your support. Thanks for what you've made it. Like seriously, the big, awesome stuff that we've had happen here at Modern Day Debate, and we're just getting warmed up. It's believe me, folks, we're determined. We are going to do even bigger and better things in the future. I'm excited about that. And so we do appreciate it. It's honestly been huge. And so Brooke Chavez, thanks for your kind words. Says we love you. Modern day debate. Thanks, Brooke. Love you too. We, I love you guys. We, it really is a community, and I'm telling you, you guys make it awesome. Seriously, by being a melting pot. Also, I, you know, I don't mention this enough, but your questions during the Q and A, like seriously, that adds value to the show. People want to listen to an audience Q and A. They get a kick out of that, hearing what other people are like thinking or curious about or asking. That's a part of the show. That it's like. Thanks to you. Like if I were to ask all the questions during the Q and A, very boring, believe me. But yes, let's see. Mark Adam Crow says that would be super cool to get coffee or something. I'll inbox you for real. Thanks, Mark. Seriously. Um, let, we'll find a time. It's really, it's lately, it's been super busy. I've been like, oh, oh. but we'll find a time. Just be patient with me. Cause sometimes I'm behind. Like I, I just remembered, I got to text somebody from Last night he texted me. I still haven't gotten back to him. But um, sometimes I just I take, I bite off more than I can chew sometimes. And that's why sometimes I'm a little bit behind uh, on stuff. But, you know, Brooke Chavez, thanks so much. Says, no matter what, we can call, we can all share empathy for our fellow humans. I agree. And that's something we've got things we agree on here. At Modern Day Debate, we all agree on this. We want everybody to have their fair shot on a neutral platform to make their case on a level playing field. We want everybody to have that. That's something that's, you could say, everybody gets their equal podium, you could say. The other thing is when we do those charity streams, like the one we did, I think it was last week, or maybe a little more than a week ago, that's something we all agree on. 
When we raise funds for starving children, like Save the Children is a highly regarded charity. They've got great ratings from charity watchdogs. That's something we all agree on. No matter whether we be Republican, Democrat, Christian, atheist, you name it, we all agree. We're like, hey, that's a good thing. That's something we're all behind. And so there are things we agree on here, no doubt about it. And so those are things that unite us, that together, people from all different walks of life, and I think that's what makes us so powerful, so epic, is that people from all different walks of life combining forces. So we have like the best and the brightest, you know, kind of like the all the different gifts of all the different positions, you know, people coming together. And so that's what has made this channel so awesome. And so thank you guys for all of your support. Thank you for making it awesome. We really do appreciate it. Human Girl, good to see you. Thanks for dropping in. And then, let's see. Mandelbrot Set, thanks for coming by. We're glad you're here. And Intra Species says, what's up, homies? Thanks so much. So gangster. I don't know if there's anybody as gangster as interspecies. I, it's hard to know if anybody's that gangster. And Agent Smith says, James, though you seem to have an ability to schedule seemingly infinite tasks, don't spread yourself too thin. Take some you time when needed. I appreciate that. And I really will. Seriously. I, I got to go to a party last Saturday with friends from the department, and it was super encouraging to spend time with them. I was like, I woke up the next morning. I was like, man, I hadn't gotten to see my classmates like, that was the first time that I'd seen him for, like, a year. No, more than a year. A year and a half. Like, seriously. So that was really encouraging. Hmm. I like that. But, but yes, we are pumped. And I don't know. Maybe you're like, ah, oh, man. Thanks for your support in the old Twitch chat. Seriously, that means a lot. Appreciate your love. <clears throat> Thanks for your kindness. I love the love in the Twitch chat as Brooks Sparrow says, thank you everyone for joining. And Tapatzel says, thanks everyone, old, new raiders and lurkers. We are glad you were here. And it's true, we absolutely are. We appreciate you. And then Brooks Sparrow says, no matter what our no matter what, we can all share empathy for our fellow humans. And we do agree on things. And that's seriously, you guys, I'm excited that this winter I have, let's just say, I'm telling you, you guys, you'll see, you'll see for yourselves. If you have any doubts about it, like we've got some cool stuff. You might be wondering, I don't know if you remember it, because I'll admit this. A couple months ago, we said like, hey, we are going to throw some huge Hail Marys late this summer. And we, we were glad to have RN back on. That was a phenomenal debate. It was a great debate with uh, him and Dr. Jackson, as well as Stuart and David Smalley. Those are great debates. Like, those seriously, really excited. Uh, and, and other debates as well that we posted have been awesome. I want to add, uh, I, I know I originally I said we were going to probably do some traveling debates. There's only a couple reasons why we haven't, but they're notable reasons that I think should clear up by this winter. One, we recognize that COVID is still a concern for a lot of people. Some debaters are not super comfortable yet. And then the other challenge is we at some point, like no joke, I'm like considering like flying in somebody from Europe, like kind of that kind of big time debates, like in-person debates. That'd be epic. No doubt about it. Other things. This summer, it's been busier than I expected. But the other thing is, believe me, it's going to be ginormous. We've got big stuff coming up. So thanks, everybody. No matter what hurdles are in our way, we are going to clear them. We will either clear them by jumping over them or we will straight run through them. Believe me, Modern Day Debate is doing big things. I've decided. I'm serious. Like, folks, I am in this for the long haul. I love this channel and I'm committed and we're going to keep on doing it. Like, I love getting to do it. And so I'm already decided. It's done. It's at the bottom line. I am committed to this channel and my dear friends together, all of us together, we are going to do big things. And like I said, it's thanks to you. Like if this is just me on this channel debating myself every night, very sad, very sad indeed. So I want to say thank you guys for making it epic. And we are going to do, believe me, big things. But good to see you in the old chat. Let's see. Human Girl says, this is my favorite community on YouTube. That's super encouraging to hear, seriously. I really do appreciate that human girl. Like that makes me feel good that it's, uh, and we're excited as we continue to grow 
continue to try to welcome more people in and say, hey, we're glad you're here no matter what walk of life you're from. And you guys, seriously, I appreciate when you, you do that in the chat as you guys do that so well. As I see people in the chat that like welcome people and I just love it. So thanks for doing that. It's, it's phenomenal. Mr. Flibble says, debating with, who is it they're debating? Mr. or no, they're debating with Zach. But we're glad you're here, Mr. Flibble and Zach. And then let me drink some water. Two seconds. Avi says, James, do you need me to debate COVID-related topics? I'm open to it. Let me know what specific topics you really like, Dr. Avi. Let me know because... I'm like, hey, I'm open to it. We'll roll the dice with YouTube a little bit. Human Girl says, love the new logo, James. I'm so encouraged that you say that. You guys, I don't know if you've noticed, I give all credit to Tapotzel. At the bottom right of our screen, there it is. Bottom right of our screen right now. Isn't that amazing? I just love it. A neutral debate platform for science, religion, and politics. We're doing all the topics. And I just want to say thank you so much to Possible for editing that. And so thanks so much, Human Girl, for saying that, as I love the logo too. Seriously, I'm like so excited. It's just like, it looks great. It looks phenomenal. I feel like the new logo and on Twitter and everything too, it makes it look almost as if we're professional. So, I mean, hey, I mean, we work really hard on this channel some nights and, you know, but no, I'm, I'm joking. It's like, seriously, I love doing this. And then Human Girl says, I got a white coffee. James, he, he, am I a sinner? I don't even know what that means. Is not is white coffee an innuendo? Please tell me before I Google search it. What is a white coffee? It's not something like a Cleveland steamer, is it? Because I remember when somebody put that in the chat and I Googled it. It's not what you think. It has nothing to do with Cleveland. Uh, let's see. What is white coffee? I don't know what you mean, human girl. She's trolling us. But thanks to Potzel says, especially for James. What was it that said? Brooke Sparrow says, share the love. To Potzel says, especially for James. And Brooke says, Yes, especially for James. That's funny. I appreciate it. You guys are sweet. Thanks for your support. I, I seriously appreciate you guys. And <clears throat> interest me, she says, the Doctor Who logo logo laughs. I'm just messing. The logo rocks. I've told you how many times, interest species. I'm only going to take so much guff from you for one day. And let's see. Tapatzel, thanks for your kind words. Seriously, it means a lot. I enjoy giving you the credit because seriously, I just love that logo. It looks so good. It, seriously, it just looks epic. And <clears throat> Human Girl says, you said no milk. It's just milk. Oh, yeah. I don't put milk in my coffee. I like my coffee black. Like the blackest of black. The inside of a coffin on a moonless night type black. Like I don't put anything in my coffee. Interspecies says, now I have to Google what that means. No, this is, it's bad. Don't Google, don't Google Cleveland Seaver. Interspecies, oh gosh, no. Okay, what was the other one? I think someone said in chat, I think it was movie theory, talked about a hot Carl. Don't Google that either, Sideshow Nav. Don't do it. It's just trust me. Interspecies says, I need to clear my search history now. You are one sick puppy, interspecies. I've told you this. One sick puppy. And then Sideshow Dab says, that ain't coffee then, human girl. You guys are funny. So thanks, everybody. I hope you guys have a, re a great rest of your night. You guys, you always get me excited. You get me in a good mood. I always enjoy it. This is always a blast every night. Whenever we go live, whenever we're going live at the start, I tell the guests, I'm like, I'm like, I am pumped. This is seriously just gets me excited. And so I just like sitting here talking to you guys, making fun of you in chat. Cameron Scott, good to see you. Says, like your men? Actually, A-K-S-H-U-L-L-Y. Actually, I am currently, well, first, I don't date, I don't date men at all. But I'm also, I'm like, you know what? This semester is so busy. I've been thinking about it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to go on dates. 
I'm going to like purposely, I don't know, maybe I will, but mostly I'm like, hey, it's a really busy semester and let's see. So maybe someday, maybe if I find a tremendous woman, a tremendous woman, I would say my traits that I really love in a woman, one, I want to travel again. I love traveling. I've always loved traveling. I don't know if I've ever shown you guys my like some travel pictures. Uh, some of my favorite places I've ever gone, Greece, Athens. Greece was like probably the favorite spot I've ever been to. Historically fascinating. And then because I've, like, I've always been into philosophy, getting to walk around these famous sites that allegedly Socrates and Plato and Aristotle walked around. Oh, that was seriously, that was amazing. And then the, also the Aeropagus, uh, Mars Hill, allegedly the apostle Paul debated on that hill. So, I mean like, and then, uh, the, I'm trying to remember the word for, um, for the shop, the Greek, like the Athens shop where, uh, Socrates would go around and basically pester people like debating people. Seeing that stuff was really fun. So anyway, I want a woman who enjoys adventure. That's a good thing. But I'm not saying I want just any woman who enjoys adventure. Like I said, if it happens, it happens. Don't think I'm like rushing into it. Believe me. Jarak says, Joshua Chapman. Hi, James. Nicole told me to, ch- to come check out the stream. Thanks, Jarak. We're glad you're here. And thanks, Nicole, for telling you to come here. We are glad you are with us. We hope you feel welcome, for real. So thanks for dropping in. Cameron Scott says, I'm kidding. Line from Airplane. Oh, I watched Airplane, I think, recently. Nobody likes older movies than me. Now, the second thing, quality that I would look for in a woman, loyalty is huge. The third is that she's willing to go against what's popular. She stands for her beliefs. That's a big one. She's willing to go against the grain of society or sometimes what's politically correct even. That's good. But Brooke Chavez says, she's out there. You'll find her. Don't like, it's not like that. It's, I'm like open-minded, but not rushing into it. We, I have to tell you, we have a phenomenal community. And Drac, we are glad you were here. And then Drac says, my favorite type of woman is a guy. (laughs) And Jarak, Sideshow Nav, thanks, man. Agreed. Thanks, Sideshow Nav, for being pretty rad. And then, let's see, Interspecies says, what's your favorite Doja Cat song? Like, I know what that is. I don't know what that is. And then Brooke Chavez says, don't forget a good sense of humor. I'm all right with that. I got nothing against people with a sense of humor. And Zoom Zolomon says, it sounds like you're just describing interspecies. Interspecies, is that one of your sock accounts? Zoom (laughs) Zolomon, nice try, okay? Busted. But uh, Drax says, yeah. Oh, you deleted your message. I was reading that. I was like two words into it. But let me finish this water and I'm going to go. It's so hard to say goodbye. I know I do like seven goodbyes and it's like, you hang up. No, you hang up. But I just enjoy you guys. You're all right in my book. Z- Zoom Solomon retracted the message. Oh, snap. Interspecies got embarrassed because I called out her sock account. It's okay, Interspecies. There's no judgment here, okay? But <laughs> let me finish this water. Zoom Solomon, it is guac. It is that sick puppy. Ellie won't be happy. I don't know who Ellie is, but let's see. Joshua Chapman says, favorite Doja Cat song. I don't know. I I don't even know what Doja Cat is. Is that like a genre or a band? <clears throat> but yeah, thanks everybody. Uh, new friends in uh, Twitch chat tonight. We do appreciate you joining us. 
We hope you have a great rest of your night. And then, <clears throat> dear friends in the Twitch chat, don't forget, Is do I understand right? You hit follow, and then Twitch will tell you when a person goes live. Because I know that I get notifications. That's how it works. Hit that follow button in Twitch. And if you're watching via YouTube, hit that subscribe button as we have big things coming up in the future. Marv the Martian says, is that vodka in the bottle? You nailed it. I just, uh, I like my gallon, my, uh, well, maybe not quite a gallon. I mean, yeah, so it's not that much vodka. And Dirac says, interspecies is in a call with us and is dying of laughter. That's funny. And then interspecies says, I'm sorry, James, my friends suck. You guys are funny. And then let's see. Zoom Zolomon says, vegan gays. I know I've heard of that. I'm trying to remember. But thank you guys. Seriously, love you guys. I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. I'm excited about the future. And that includes this Friday and Saturday juicy debates coming up. So appreciate it. Amazing. Beta! We're on a winning streak. Thanks, guys. I love you. I'll see you next time. Amazing.